They say AI is taking over the world. Are you ready for it? This is Robert Manny, host of Guys Guys TV. And this week, my very special guest is Raj Venkatesan. We're going to talk about AI and marketing right here, right now on Guys Guys TV. You can also catch me on Guys Guys Radio, my worldwide podcast, and also my show on KCAA Radio right here in Southern California. Guys Guys TV, Guys Guys Radio, thanks for your support. Okay, Guys Guys Radio, it's my favorite portion of this show when I bring on a guest that's going to teach me and all of you listeners and viewers out there something new. And today we've got a really interesting subject. We're going to talk about artificial intelligence and who hasn't heard that term over the last couple of years it's becoming more and more part of our, our lives now. So we've got an expert. His name is Raj Venkatesan, and he's written a book with his uh, partner, Jim Lesinski, and it's called The AI Marketing Canvas, a five-stage roadmap to implementing artificial intelligence in marketing. Let me tell you a little bit about Raj. We'll bring him out. He is the co-author of the book, AI Marketing Canvas. He's professor of business administration at the Darden Grad School of Business at the University of Virginia. His writings appeared in the Journal of Marketing, Harvard Business School Reviews, and he's the co-author of Marketing Analytics. It came out in 2021. Jim Lasinski is partner, is a clinical associate professor of marketing at Northwestern, Kellogg uh, School of Management, and um, he did a 12-year stint at Google. He was VP of Consumer uh, Solutions. So listen, between these two gentlemen, they put together a book that it really truly is. I went through it, and I'm a marketer by profession. It's a true roadmap to how to kind of understand AI, understand the implications, and how to have a step-by-step -step plan to in implement it and integrate it into your marketing mix. So welcome to Guys Guys Radio, Raj Venkatesan. Thank you, Robert, for having me here. It's a pleasure, and I look forward to our conversation. Okay, I'm sorry if I mangle your name. I'm doing the best I can. I, I always do that. But anyhow, welcome. So let's start right at the beginning for uh, the benefit of our audience. What, what exactly, based on the work you've done, how do you define AI, and what does it mean today, big picture, for today's marketers? Yeah, great question, great start. Uh, so the question about what is AI is something we definitely dealt with a lot when we started writing this book because we had to define it and it's being used in many different ways now. And so for us, we took a definition that is more applicable for business leaders and marketers. And what we uh, felt is there is a definition by John McCarthy, who is considered the father of AI, modern AI. And his definition was anything that if, uh, if a machine does something that if done by humans would be considered intelligent, then it is AI. And which Fantastic. is kind of, you know, uh, what it includes is we are not focused on one particular technique or a way to do uh, AI. We are more focused on machines making decisions that, uh, you know, in general, if humans did it, it would be considered intelligent. So what is that? So it could be something as, as like predicting customer churn. Mm -hmm. It could be recognizing images. Uh, if you say cat pictures, Google returns you cat pictures. Or if you have an app where with Google Lens, you could uh, show the pair, like, you know, scan the picture and it knows what it is. The machine knows what it is. And then it can tell you where you can buy it on Amazon or text analysis to understand like what the sentiment of a review is. So those are some of the things where you're basically allowing the machine to uh, understand data and make decisions. Okay, so ultimately it's all about um, improving the customer experience uh, for, you say forging an emotional connection with the consumer, which I'm, you know, I, I understand the connection. I think it's a communication connection. I don't know if it's an emotional connection, but when you're, I guess when you're helping out uh, consumers, you, they become friendly to you. So is that, is that what you're referring to? How, what do you mean by emotional connection with consumers? Because coming from my background, which is advertising, you know, the ads that work, you can do what we call stratocution, where you just have all the bullet points that you need to get across there. That's usually false flat. You have to have a human story and you have to connect with the, with the consumer. Yeah. How, how do you do that with AI? I understand about yes. improving the, the consumer experience, but mm -hmm. tell us how you do that. Yeah, so I, definitely. So uh, yes, the first thing you talked about is definitely personalizing. 
that if you know what moves a customer to your product, you're focused on that. Right. So, for example, if somebody is looking at like for Chase Bank, if they're looking at like savings uh, as uh, returns as their uh, main reason for banking uh, and choosing a banking brand, then talking to them about savings and returns would be like the personalization that we are talking about. Now, how and I agree with you that uh, you can have like all the keywords uh, collected into an ad and that is an ad, but it doesn't really connect emotionally. But what is AI is also getting into is um, music and video and words and the combination, how it influences people. And the behavior, ability right? to uh, actually know within 10 seconds or within 15 seconds in a video what, how do you make it happen where there is a higher emotional uh, connection and also engagement with the brand. And so while those are not like at scale now, they are starting to do it. But we talk in the book about an example with again, Chase Bank and where they decided to write the ad copy itself using machines, mainly because they wanted the machine, uh, they wanted to create a connection with the consumers which at scale was difficult online and they had to allow the machine to write the campaign. And they actually saw good results from that. And you and there are a lot of uh, deep learning algorithms that are coming up which can understand human emotions. And uh, yeah. I'm sure the agency was thrilled, right? <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's no, like, it's, it's uh, like the yeah, I not only the marketers are gonna be replaced, but the agencies too, right? Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, you bring up a good point about replacement and fear of replacement, right? And more and more, I feel like where marketers need to go in this you know, is actually, there is this, uh, not in our book, but it's another uh, concept called when your predictions are improving, when your ability to make predictions increases, uh, the value of judgment improves like the with the, the premium you put on judgment increases so the as marketers our goal should then be about strategy and metrics and judgment and leave the predictions and the execution to machines and i think the more we can learn that we can ride this wave right and, and, and it's really i think what you're saying raj and correct me if i'm wrong is that you know, the, the goal isn't to replace people, it's to give people different roles because it yeah. should actually, if it, this is done correctly, it should create more jobs, more opportunities. Yes. And just AI can do a lot of the heavy lifting, a lot of the grunt yes. work. And we, that, that's what you're saying, right? Yes, yes. And there's uh, the fascinating story about this is in Washington Post and how they used AI. Uh, you know, they have AI now run uh, write articles where the articles are more standard articles on like, you know, reporting on a sports event or reporting on some election result. Uh, but those are standardized. But the beauty about this is that AI was trained by journalists because now the journalists can go and do what they wanted to always do, investigative, deep insight uh, stories and leave the standard stuff to the machine to do. That's a great point. That's a great point, Raj. My special guest is Raj Venkatesan. His book is called The AI Marketing Can Canvas, Five-Step Roadmap to Implementing AI in Marketing. So if you're a brand or a brand manager or a CMO, whatever, and you know that AI is not going away and you're going to have to get your arms around it, just like digital came in and some people resisted and others said, no, we've got to make this work for us. AI is, the to me, the next step on that journey. What are some of the things that marketers need to do first to say, okay, I need to survey the landscape. What do I need to know about <clears throat> my brand and AI and how we can best put a program together that fits my particular business? Because as you know, you've got B2B, you've got B2C, you've got tech companies, you've got financial services, you've got Coca-Cola, Starbucks. So you do CPG also. I'm wondering how it works for image brands, but like spirits or something like that, but we can get into it. But initially, Regardless of your category, what should a marketer be considering when considering AI? Yeah, uh, so it starts with uh, what we call as understanding customer engagement. 
is as a marketer and most and marketers know is like okay we have to acquire retain grow and promote word of mouth among our consumers promote a customer community and we are doing that already and what way we can do with ai is start personalizing each aspect of this customer engagement and so where you begin is first document what you're doing for each of these customer engagement activities. We'll touch each touch point. Each touch point and what the objective is, right? Where, what, what do you want as return? Uh, and then look at what data you have to understand and document these touch points, right? Like uh, when you call them, what was the message? What was the customer reaction? And so it's a customer centric first party data. And that's the first beginning point is developing the foundation layer of all the touch points that you have with your consumers. And then at some point you should say, okay, what do I want uh, AI to do for me strategically? You know, what is the objective? Not just that, obviously you're going to, it's going to be in, integrated into every brand that's out there, but you want it to have, a, I would think some specific goals, whether it's consumer acquisition or uh, yeah. updating, upgrading the experience making that bond, creating that, forging that bond, all yes. of the above. Yes. So do you look at it first by based on your category and your specific usual business goals and say, how can AI be uh, woven into this to make everything work better? Is that how you do yes. it? Yes, yes, absolutely, absolutely. Okay. So you're, you once you have the data, then you're starting at like, okay, let me start with either acquisition, retention, growth, or advocacy. And like find out what we call as value pockets, basically where things that if you improve and personalize, consumers are going to value that. Because you can be doing many things where the consumers don't care about that, right. but understanding like, you know, what consumers care and provide, and do they want personalization in that? So that would be the first step to find out these value pockets and then use the data and try out some experiments where you can see uh, the returns, right? You have to first learn how to use it right. for your own context. You know, it's, it's interesting because I remember when um, uh, digital came came up and it, it, first the internet came out and everybody's like, oh, wow, it's going to be free. This is great. And then that changed very quickly. As soon as somebody made a dollar, <laughs> the whole mm -hmm. thing changed, right? But uh, many brands, many like consumer packaged goods brands, I remember Chester Cheeto, you know, the website and like nobody went there because as far as I know, uh, because there was no reason to until they start to make it more of an engagement process. Is yeah. this the same kind of uh, perspective that marketers need to have when starting to uh, shake hands with AI, if you will? Because if you just do it for the sake of doing it, it's not real, you're not going to get the most bang for your buck. Is that yes. correct, Raj? Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. And also, if you have like the whole connection, because digital with and I'm like that you're going from digital to AI because it is an evolve, it is an evolution, right? And with digital, you looked at how you can connect to their consumer digital and like collect data about their preferences. Now with AI, what you're doing is with collection of all this information, you're applying algorithms on top of that to make some kind of uh, uh, initiative, which is machine driven. So you can think of like, if you are, you know, um, if you like, if you're Coca-Cola, what they did with like the vending machines, because that was digitization of the whole process where they sell through retailers. So they really don't know whether I'm coming back, like whether I'm drinking Coke every day or I drink water or, uh, you know, uh, mango juice or tea. And so, uh, but they need to know that because they can know my consumption. Right? Exactly. And so that's what they got with this uh, smart vending machine with the internet of things and like, well, and where you can go in and mix and match your drink. And guess what? What they found was Sprite Cherry is the most popular drink mix that we make. And that's what they brought in the retail store. Something they knew from our uh, uh, actions on the how did how, just out of curiosity so how did ai help with that because i would think if you had a vending machine and you know the sprite cherry sells out faster you can just track sales so what did yeah. the ai do to add to that so that's the beauty of it. it's like it's really just data right and it is for coke it was just something as and that is what we are trying to say in the book is 
we see AI as a lot of things. And of course, like with Chase example and with Washington Post, you saw this great, like it's all machine driven writing, but it can also be something as simple, but have really powerful effects as just saying, what is the one that we are running out of most? Oh, this is the most popular, let's bring it up. And I think where they're going next is the Power8 Power Center, where they are starting to customize the combination of Power8 drinks for football teams, uh, college football teams. They did it with the Louisiana State, where based on the particular uh, athlete and particular routine of exercise that day, the coach can put in some information on what is happening and Coke. A power Eight Power Center can recommend the correct combination of drink for the athlete. Oh, fantastic, personalized. So you're getting your own version of Power Eight. That's, yeah. that's that's so cool. So let's. I want to. We were jamming on time, and I want to get to the meat of your book, which is the five stage roadmap to implementing artificial intelligence, because that's really teaching marketers. Here's what you have to look at, and I think you guys did a fantastic job because the book is. You know, it's not about coding, as you say. It's really about marketing and strategy and how to use this. And it's very user friendly. And you've got a lot of great inf information there that makes perfect sense and is well written. So thank you for that. But talk to us about the five steps. You've got foundation, experimentation, expansion, transformation, monetization. Take a few minutes and give us the overview on that, Raj. Yeah, definitely. So let's take through the Coke example itself, right? So when we look at uh, Coke, um, you had the foundation where you can look at the smart vending machine was the way where they laid the foundation for data collection from the smart vending machine. Then the next one was their first initiative was actually uh, not even knowing what Sprite Cherry, but basically ensuring there is no stockouts. So you know which place to stock what kind of flavor. So that was the first thing about retention. You're personalizing based on the different locations, the retention then that is the experimental stage. you're seeing some returns then you go into expansion where they went after this uh, sprite cherry where they saw that there is this value and so they went after expansion then the fourth stage was uh, transformation where all aspects of AI and the thing is uh, personalized all aspect of customer needs. and that's where they started building apps to uh, where you can connect with your consumer friends and pre send the order to a vending machine if you're going out for uh, hanging out and you can get the coke vending machine to pre-order and connect with your friends and get their preferences and order for them as well that creates a customer community and the, finally, the Power8 Power Center example is where they take all of these uh, uh, capabilities and create a new business stream that creates a new monetization stream. And that's what we saw with the Power8 Power Center. You know, I really loved what you did with uh, Starbucks in terms of breaking that down, because unlike Coke, you know, Coke CPG, it's a beverage, but uh, Starbucks is more transactional. So it could mirror even financial services or some other or B2B, whatever. It's transactional and that's what business is all about. Could you just give us the highlights of how Starbucks has successfully done this? Because I was blown away when I read your timeline about all the, all the steps that an evolution that Starbucks keeps not only started early, kept, kept taking and continue mm -hmm. to just refine, refine, refine. It was brilliant. It was wonderful, wasn't it? We were fascinated too. And like 20 million almost consumers at the time of the book, it was probably 18.9, but I'm sure it's close to 20 now. But uh, that was the loyalty program was first time was the app was started, which was a foundation of data collection. And the payment systems was the first time you need payments because that gets consumers to use the app. And so then if you connect the payment systems, now you have enough transaction information as well. And then that connects into uh, personalized recommendations. And now they are now, and they're also doing Deep Brew, which is giving a platform for other retailers to tap into Starbucks. So they've gone from loyalty programs to payments, to in-store operations, to work well with the baristas and the loyalty programs and personalized recommendations to a platform where other retailers can tap into their expertise. And so it's it's another example and of awesome. all and, those five pieces. The thing that blew me away was they, they this is how they learned also about people were uh, calling in their orders ahead of time. 
yeah. how they could take advantage of that opportunity for the baristas yeah. and everybody else. And it just makes the consumer experience better also. So everybody's happy. You're not antagonizing. Yeah. not like, I'm, I'm in a hurry. I got to get my coffee. I'm late for work, whatever. Boom, you go in there, you pick it up. They even have some recommendations, maybe some specials based on your past preference. So great stuff. And you guys have done an amazing job with this. Let me ask you uh, just a ph philosophical question. When we get into micro-targeting and even with AI, um, do we... Do we run the risk as a culture to start developing people in a very um, um, one-dimensional way? Like somebody's online and they look at cars and then you try to sell them tires and then it's wrestling or, or whatever, but everything's very close in, like profiling. And people hopefully are going to become more and more multidimensional. Do we do, is there anything that, um, that marketers miss because of micro-targeting that AI can solve? Oh, great question. And it's a tough one. Definitely a tough question because this is something I'm really actually after the book really thinking about it as well because what you're asking is like the externalities of if everybody does this, what happens? And I think that there are two things here. One is what we are looking at is first party data, which means we are primarily looking at uh, a non-ad intensive environment where you're looking at a loyalty program or something where you are paying a subscription service per se, if you would, mm -hmm. right? But of course there are ad uh, intensive environments and you wanna be careful on how much you're doing this kind of uh, uh, targeting and whether there are consequences for like humans and development as such. And I think some of the initiatives on privacy is important here and also, um, some understanding, I think, as society of how we consume media is important. I think whenever there is new technology and new medium that is coming in, it goes through waves where there is first excitement and then where there is scare, there are, you will realize the negative consequences and then you come up with systems and like, you know, guardrails in there to be better able to manage this system. So definitely, I think, uh, if everybody does it, yes, that can be really a uh, challenging situations and you kind of have to see uh, regulation wise or as a public policy wise, how we understand uh, this world in terms of like, you know, and well, I wanted to get asked the question because I want to see if smart people like yourself who are uh, thought leaders in this area are considering this. And I'm so pleased by your answer that you are. I, there's no easy solution to it. And we don't wanna develop one dimensional people, but you know, you gotta make your number every quarter. So the, these things kind of, I guess, flesh out over time, right? They yeah. have a life, brands, as you know, Raj, they have a life of their own. So, yeah. <laughs> you know, in this, you can do everything you can do, but ultimately sometimes a consumer connects to something, whether it's an ad line or just something about the product or a new use or whatever. And then, then you have to say, oh, whoa, well, how do I use all my tools digital and AI to leverage that, right? Yes, absolutely. And I think that's where competition is important because even if you are getting one dimensional as a consumer, you it also, as long as you have the lines of competition open, you can have a new brand that is coming up, which is kind of, you know, trying to move you away from your equilibrium into uh, to attract you away from your equilibrium. Right. So you want to, that's the key is you need to have competition and the ability for new brands to come in and attract consumer. Great, great stuff. And that's why I asked this also, because for Guys Guys Radio, we want to bring new ideas, new thinking and considerations for how men and women can both win and everybody lives their best lives. We bring new information here. So we want to be responsible with our with our technology. And I think you're doing a great job. The name of the book is AI Marketing Canvas, a five step roadmap to implementing Artificial Intelligence and Marketing. My very special guest, Raj Venkatesan. And I'm sorry I keep saying it probably incorrectly, but tell us, Raj, where everybody can find more about you, about Jim, your writing partner, and about the book and the work you're doing. So, uh, so we both are on LinkedIn. We'd love to connect you uh, with you on LinkedIn. Uh, you can find the book on Amazon.com. Uh, we also have a website, AIMCbook.com. We'd love to hear from you. And uh, looking forward to uh, your new connections and uh, spreading the message. You did a great job. You've actually, and I think it's a really good thing, you've put a human touch to the whole AI thing. And I think that's really important. So keep doing the great work you're doing, Raj. And 
thank you for being my guest on Guys Guys Radio. And keep us in mind, we'll do it again. Thank you for having me. It was a great pleasure. Thank you. If you're enjoying the guests and content we bring you each and every week on Guys Guys Radio and TV, please support us by subscribing to our channels. Thank you.